YouTube, it's good to see you all again. Thanks for watching. Uh, we are on our fourth recording session for the Purge List, so hopefully we're, we're just about getting there. You will have been following so far. Um, if, if you haven't watched any of the previous videos, then I would recommend you start from video one, otherwise it's maybe a little bit confusing. But if you have watched the videos up until now, you'll know that we are playing for a domination victory with Persia. We have got to, I can't remember, 1700 AD, something like that. We are doing fairly well, I think. Um, we're sort of consolidating the continent that we won via force. Here we go, we've got some pictures now. Let me show you rather than just talking about it. So you can see on the map down here, we pretty much own this entire continent. Um, we've got the remnants of where Japan and London used to live. You can see just I'll give my laptop a second or two to load. Yeah, so here we go. London's capital, Kyoto, York and Nottingham, all conquests for us. We started here in Forever Golden. We've got the Hilltop Outpost and the Deer Reserve. Now I named all of these ridiculous little names because I couldn't pronounce any of the Persian uh, names, so apologies for that, but there we go. You can see that Arabia and um, Sweden have got little um, little outposts on my island, but that's that's fine, we're going to forgive them for now. We weren't going to expand up there anyway. We've claimed this bit of coal, the seven coal here, and to be honest, I don't think there was anything else particularly needed up here, apart from some horses and whatnot, but um, so we're fine, we're fine with that. So we're going for a domination victory. You can see on the victory progress screens that we own two capitals already. So it's Sweden, it's Rome, and it's Arabia. Now, Sweden is probably doing the worst out of everybody, and they have this huge standing army, um, which they've decided to attack Brussels with. Now, Brussels is a completely impenetrable stronghold where it's surrounded north sides by mountains. Um, it's, it's Sweden brought no siege weaponry at all. Uh, it was really, really, like, just ill-planned, really. So, so Brussels, um, my ally as well, they're giving me, I think it's like 26 culture per turn. Yeah, there we go. Um, they're keeping, keeping Sweden at bay, hitting down their, their army, which is fine. So Sweden, I'm not overly worried about at the moment. Uh, Mecca and Rome, you can see here, sort of have started near each other. Um, again, there we go, the graphics is coming down. Now, Rome is the powerhouse of the island. You can see that Mecca is beginning to grow a little bit now that they've got... Um, I think they're going to have sea trade routes between other cities. Baghdad and Kufa are actually quite new to the party here. Um, but you can see Rome in Kume. Rome has a lot of population, and Rome is actually the technological leader of the world at the moment. I'm only a little bit behind, but they are the sort of the biggest threat, um, especially the fact they've got the most soldiers out of everyone. Now, I too have a lot of soldiers. I have a lot of, of units. You can see here, um, when I go onto the unit list, um, you see all the pikemen, the knights, horsemen, gatling guns, cannons. I have a big army, but the problem is, is that it's, a, it's not the highest of tech that it could be. And that is because, up until now, I've mainly been teching towards the top of the tree. We, we beelined straight to the modern era. Um, by doing that, we have um, we got ourselves public schools fairly quickly to catch up with Rome in terms of science. And then we went to the modern era to get freedom, the ideological tract which has given us, the, freedom isn't the most natural um, policy tree for a domination victory, that this one here, universal suffrage, most importantly, that second bit, golden ages are 50% longer. Combined with the 50% from that, the 50% from Persia, and 50% from the Chichen Itza, which I built earlier in the game, I get golden ages that are 250% longer than average, which means, you can see here, I've built up a golden age of 73 turns. So we're in pretty much a constant golden age, which is great. Because you can see here, when we go into our cities, all of our trading posts are very nicely giving us um, three gold each. You can see here, a lot aren't being worked by my city, but um, later in the game, I can I can focus on, on getting more of those being worked. Um, we're keeping a bit of growth in Forever Golden for now. When, when we hit war, I might, um, I might just force it to, to hit a bit more gold. Um, okay, so that's where we are. Uh, we are just sort of teching along to getting artillery, which is dynamite, which we're only about 13 turns away from. Once we've got that, we can seriously start to think about attacking, um, attacking Rome, really. We've got frigates being built. We haven't really got a navy, but we've got frigates being built in Nottingham and York. When London and Kyoto were done with their, their bits and bobs, we can, we can move on. Um, 
can see Kyoto, I think, normally lacks production quite heavily. Yeah, there's not much production going on there, but that's fine. That's fine. Um, if I have to go to default focus, it doesn't really do much. No. Okay. Well then, let's uh, let's press on. So you can see here, plus 160 gold per turn. As long as we're in golden ages, we will get a lot, a lot of gold with um, Persia. You can see a lot of workers have built a lot of um, trading posts around. Um, we probably have got more trading posts than we need. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, but um, we've got enough there to to keep our gold ticking along nicely. So yeah, it's not too bad really. In terms of domination, our, our first target is going to be Rome. I think if we take Kume, um, we'll be able to attack Rome's navy, uh, clear that out of the water. Hopefully they won't have much in the way of navy, but we'll see, I'm sure, pretty quickly. Um, pearls, okay, both failed. Arabia doesn't want to repeal that. Arabia, oh, Arabia's got all the votes, really. Never mind. Um, that's fine. We're not going for a diplomatic victory, so we don't have many... Uh, delegates in the World Congress, but that's fine. We can live with that. Upgrade to a knight here. Wonderful. So we're just sort of bringing, we're consolidating all our army at the moment. We're bringing it all back in order to um, upgrade it necessarily. We should probably keep a little bit of money on hand to upgrade to artillery, actually. I think artillery are going to be more important than a lot of the other um, things. Oh dear, Rome. That's a shame. Rome we used to be really good friends with, but we've, we've kind of fallen out with Rome recently. <laughs> um, but that's fine. We, we'd rather be friends of Arabia for when we go to war with Rome. Um, they'll be able to help us out a little bit, hopefully. Sidon and Brussels and Byblos have all been rigged. Those are the three city-states we're sort of keeping an eye on at the moment. Um, Sidon, you can see Rome still have a fairly good influence over um, but that's a military state, so we're not overly fast. Biblos is ours, and um, Brussels is ours as well. So we've got two city state, no, three at the moment. We still got Sophia. That's good. Sophia is our is our very good friend. I might move the side on one actually to something else that's a little bit more beneficial for us. Maybe to Wittenberg. Yeah, let's do that. I'd rather have the extra faith. Um, so Wittenberg, Wittenberg, and we'd rather have the extra faith because we can actually start to think about buying bits and pieces later in the game. We can only buy profits at the moment, but when we fill out one of the uh, social policy trees, I think we're pretty close to filling out the aesthetics tree, um, which will give us more uh, great time, and we can build more artists, which again will just keep us in a constant golden age, um, which would be very nice indeed. Uh, this knight, just wait there for a sec, there's no point in you doing anything at this precise moment. Ah, my other horseman's made a... Ah, oh, they've made peace with Brussels. Sweden has given up its completely ridiculous attack. We have been denounced by Rome. Ooh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, and, and now Arabia want to trade with us, okay. So we don't particularly need any more happiness at this precise moment, but what we can do is we can trade... A lot of our stuff to them for gold. So we they normally get about 240 gold from each um, luxury. So we can go for one gold per turn and then 450 up front and see if they do that. I'm not giving you coal and aluminium, no. Fine, let's just go for 450. Will you give me that? Looks good to me. I'm, I'm losing about 30 gold, but to be honest, it's a nice amount of gold to stockpile from Arabia there, just so that we can upgrade all our artillery. Um, they don't know it yet, but they're just going to be helping us kill Rome, which is probably in Arabia's agenda, to be honest. Now, the reason why Rome is our main target is because, A, they are technologically ahead. We want to nip them in the bud before they start thinking about building rockets. Um, secondly, check out Rome. If we go into global politics here... Look at all the ridiculous wonders Rome has as an empire. That is a huge, huge amount of wonders. Um, even if we don't, we don't particularly need them, but we may as well kill Rome just, just to get them, to be honest. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, that and Rome might actually get its grubby paws off our city-states as well. It's got patronage there, do you see? Rationalism, it's going to keep ahead on tech. No, Rome, Rome are a good first target. Um... 
Let's just check very quickly while we're at it, the global politics situation. So Arabia has been denounced as well. So we're going to denounce Rome back. Rome has denounced us, but we're going to denounce them back. Um, discuss. Denounce. Here we go. I, don't, I love the fact that they don't like being denounced after denouncing in the first place. Oh, he looks so sheepish. Oh, poor old Caesar. He looks so sheepish all of the time. Oh, he's such a sweet little man. I mean, he's old now. God, he must be, what, closing in on 1800 years, 1850 years, something like that. He's an old man. Um, so hopefully that'll make Arabia like us a little bit more. Um, and it may even get Sweden on side. I think Rome and Sweden are pretty pretty even, to be honest. It won't make a difference, but um, it's worth doing it anyway. Um, right, a factory. We could be building a factory, but first of all, let's build one frigate in London. Then we can get three frigates roughly. You know, three frigates is, is a good start. We're going to need more navy than that, don't get me wrong, but it makes a little... It makes a, it makes a good start anyway. Uh, horsemen, yep, yeah, you upgrade as well. That's good. Cool. Cavalry will be quite good. Strength 34 troops that will plunder very well. Um, we're going to have three cavalry, I think. I'll make a nice little change. Can we upgrade to lancers by now? I'm sure we've we've unlocked the lancer technology. I think I might just have missed it. Um, because upgraded to, to getting to lancers would be good against Rome as well. We could pretty much just run in and plunder every tile that we could as quickly as we could in an attempt to sort of shut down Rome's uh, growth. That would be fun. Holy City, so Rome's kind of losing its own religion there now. Great scientist has been born. Woohoo! Right, now, um, we're about 1800 now. There's no point hanging on to these great scientists, really, in my opinion. So we're just gonna, we're gonna pop him. We're gonna bulb him. Is that the, the technical term, to bulb? Every time I say it, it seems a little bit like crass. But never mind. Oh, he's been built in the hilltop outpost. Uh, where is he? Where is he? Here we go. So what's he going to give us? 2,937. Wow. Bang. 